just to remind folks what Rudy Giuliani said back on June 3rd on Meet the Press, he was talking about the possibility of President Trump stepping in and ending an investigation like this. That's a very unrealistic thing, but if you're asking in a theoretical sense, yeah. I mean, it, would, it, could, it could lead to impeachment, it could lead to, I mean, if he terminated an investigation of himself, it could right. lead to all sorts but of But constitutionally, you could, you're making the argument that you think constitutionally <laughs> he could, is what you're saying. Uh, I'm saying constitutionally it sure looks that way. So, Ned, you've got Rudy Giuliani saying that we talked to a, a former federal prosecutor in the DOJ and asked him. He said the president could do it. He could step in. He said the question is whether it's lawful or does it have a corrupt purpose? And that question would likely be decided by the courts. What do you think is going on here? And what's your answer to that question? Could he stop it if he wanted to? Well, yeah, Chris, the, the, both the feature and flaw of our system is that there is very little that is written specifically into the Constitution, into law, into statute. Much of this is based on norms, norms that our previous 44 presidents, all good people, uh, for the most part, have observed and adhered to. We now have a president who is willing to flout these norms, these norms of American society. And this is the first time we found ourselves in, in this position. So, yes, I, I I think uh, technically the president could step in. Uh, the fact, though, is that he would probably do so in an effort to obstruct justice uh, with malign intent to exonerate himself. So I think that is where uh, this would uh, violate um, what uh, what we have observed for the 240 some years of our republic. But the other question, Chris, is that we have focused so much on the president's assertion that he could run this investigation that we've overlooked uh, his statement that he has stayed out of it to date, and that is. <laughs> entirely false. We have to remember that we have... We just played that sound of him. I mean, we, oh. we could play We could play a, the entire hour of sound of him talking about and criticizing this investigation. And, and you have to remember, we have the Mueller probe in the first place because Donald Trump fired Jim Comey with Russia in mind. He's continued to uh, harangue the prosecution. He's tampered with witnesses by encouraging people like Paul Manafort to stay strong. So the idea that he's, that he's played a, a laissez-faire with this investigation is just totally absurd on its face. Well, not only that, but Susan, just the idea, again, even if he can do it legally, if there aren't really strong restrictions on it, a president deciding to end an investigation that essentially is about his election? I think he would have a tremendous amount of backlash. And even though the Republicans have been hands off with this president, I think that's a bridge too far. I do not think do you he'll think go he that would do far. it? Do you think, do you think that, that he's just talking. He, Donald Trump likes to talk and he likes to talk about how much power he has. Well, he likes to talk about how much power he has because he thinks it makes him look strong, like I can take care of this. In fact, it, it has the opposite effect. It makes him look kind of weak and petty that he's basically punching down. So do I think he would do it? If his back was against the wall, if they start finding out things, and I think that's what he's most afraid of, you have the Don McGahn interview, you have Amorosa with tapes, you have Michael Cohen looking to make a deal with tapes. I think this president is afraid, he's a cornered animal, and he will do anything to survive. Mark, I, I guess, you know, you have the president uh, to the point of always wanting to look strong, saying, I want to talk to the special prosecutor, I have nothing to hide, and that he thinks he can convince almost anybody of anything. He believed he could go in there or suggested to people, I can go in there and I can help him to see that I have not done anything wrong. So uh, now he says he's afraid of the perjury trap. Have his lawyers gotten to him or, and some of his aides? Or do you think that he never intended to talk to Robert Mueller at all? Uh, I don't, it's, it's, it's unclear. I think Donald Trump personally is uh, so narcissistic. He probably thinks he can talk his way out of this. I think it's more the former you mentioned. His attorneys have probably convinced him that this is um, uh, questionable and maybe even a perjury trap. But you know, you can't be trapped into perjury if you're not susceptible to lying, if that's not your nature. None of us would be susceptible to perjury. We just go in and tell the truth. I think what he's doing today or what he's done overnight with this whole thing about running it if he wants to, it's another way for him to distract and try to control the narrative the whole list that Susan gave from Cohen to Omarosa and then even more recently you have an esteemed 
former head of the CIA saying he's a traitor basically and trying to burn the country down. You also have, he can try to spin it to the base as much as he wants to, but you have sort of uh, a, a resurrection of the John Dean affair. You have Don McGahn talking to Mueller. And I don't care what Don McGahn's lawyer says about it not being incriminating. If Don McGahn just says what we already know, that he had to threaten to resign to prevent Trump from forcing him to fire Mueller, that's incriminating on its own face. And I don't think he denied that at all. So I think all of this, again, is a way for him to try to convince those who still support him that he's still in some type of control when he absolutely is not. And I agree with Susan. He is, he might very well try to fire Mueller or fire Rosenstein, but then I think we should go ahead and embrace ourselves for a uh, constitutional crisis. Don McGahn is such an interesting piece of this, right, in the, the 30 hours that he talked to Mueller's team over six months, I guess three separate days. His lawyers, McGahn's lawyers, told the Washington Post that McGahn did not in any way incriminate the president. Um, do you think it makes sense that he to say he's not a problem, that he did nothing to hurt the president. We don't know what happened in there, and we don't know what blanks Don McGahn has filled in for Robert Mueller. That's right, and we also don't know what other lines of questioning to other people that Don McGahn's testimony opened up to Mueller. And that's where we're always, you know, we have to remember Mueller's always about three to six months ahead of what we know as of today. That testimony was given quite some time ago. So I think Don McGahn was loyal to his oath of office, loyal to country, and he spoke as the lawyer to the office of the president. He did not speak as Donald Trump's personal attorney, and that's a very important difference. One of the things, I mean, you know, pre the president said, look, uh, of course I said McGahn should you know, speak because I have nothing to hide. Part of his whole feeling, you know, that he is in control. He wanted to make very clear that that was his decision. He also keeps talking now about taking away security clearances, and he suggested even James Clapper might be being nice to him because he wants to keep his own security clearance. He also tweeted about an interview that former FBI official Phil Mudd did on cable news. Take a watch of this. When I am requested to sit on an advisory board, let me ask you one question. How much do you think I'm paid to do that at the request of the U.S. government? Give me one answer, and you got 10 seconds. How much? I'll, give, I'll ask you a question. How much are you paid for your answer the question. contracting gig? For, for being a for being I have a no contracts official. with the U.S. government that pay money. I'm not talking zero. This, when you have a security clearance, I have and you zero keep relationships it. with the private sector that involve my security clearance. Zero. So then the president, who obviously was watching, tweeted, just watched former intelligence official Philip Mudd become totally unglued and weird while debating John Brennan's security clearance. Mudd is in no mental condition to have such a clearance should it be revoked. Besides, Ned, um, just that that's how the president of the United States is spending his time, spending his time watching cable and then essentially doing a live in time commentary on it i mean is that where we are he's just picking people to threaten does this support the argument he's using security clearances simply as a weapon against his critics not because some of those people might in some way be leakers or pose a threat to national security Yes. The answer to that is yes, absolutely, 100 percent. You know, first of all, Donald Trump should be very careful about having unglued and weird as the barometer for having a security clearance. Amen. Uh, look, I, I think what we saw from Phil Mudd was passion, passion that Phil Mudd had dedicated, passion that Phil Mudd had channeled uh, to service of his country over the course of decades. But what we have seen from this president is not uh, is an understanding that security clearances are not a reward. Uh, these are not something that go only to your defense defenders to your champions. These are uh, what former officials have so that they can consult, they can share their knowledge, they can work and continue to work on the hardest, the most challenging problems we face as a nation with their current colleagues, with those who remain in the intelligence community, in the law enforcement community. But you're absolutely right. This president sees it as a political reward, and he is seeing the removal as security clearance as punishment, as a chilling signal to all of those, all of those who would criticize him and who would find fault with what he is doing. And, and, and frankly, uh, that borders on, on autocratic tendencies. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.